Hello and welcome to Tunapuna Open Bible Church Online. You're about to hear a powerful word from God, so let's get straight into it. Here's Reverend Dr. Desmond Austin. Today we want to talk about five things Jesus taught on fasting. Just from these two verses, five things. The first thing is conditioned by the word when. So the first thing he told us is fasting is compulsory for all disciples because he says when you fast. Note, I'm going to be emphasizing the idea of fasting is to be genuine because there are all kinds of fast. And we speak today about genuine fast. So I say genuine fasting is compulsory for all disciples. As we declare and, and, and we de describe this year as the year of divine intervention, I want us to recognize that the church of Jesus Christ has not been as strong as we ought to be. The church of Jesus Christ has not been as mature as we could be. The church of Jesus Christ has not come into its inheritance as we should. In other words, we have been, as it were, marching around our Jerichos. And we're not even aware as to where we are as far as our surrounding our Jerichos are concerned. In other words, there are many of us who have been walking around Jerichos, our Jerichos. We have been given our shouts, <laughs> but we have not yet gone in to our possession. We have not yet inherited our inheritance. And therefore, the world looks upon us with a sense of disdain. And the position of the church in the eyes of the world is not as it could be. I'm saying all that to suggest that our fasting should not be in vain. We need to understand, we need to go into our inheritance. And these are the days when we ought to be fasting. Why? Because we continue in the ministry of Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus Christ still speaks to the earth. And how does he do it? He speaks through the church. He speaks through the church. We must understand, we must become the voice of Christ in the earth. We must speak to nations. We must speak to circumstances. We must speak to situations. And that's why Jesus spoke about the reason for fasting when he is taken away. So we can hear him, hear from him, and speak his voice to the nations. So we must recognize two important uh, situations that are confronting us. We must become very clear in our purpose. Our purposes must be clearly defined. We must begin to understand we have to inherit our inheritance. And we got to know what is ours and how to take it through the power of prayer and fasting. But we also need to know how to declare the mind, the will, and the purposes of God through the church, to the nations, to the society, through the church, to the various cultural mountains of society. We've got to get serious. We've got to get serious. So that's why Jesus said fasting is compulsory. You and I must know that fasting is compulsory. The word fast simply comes from a Greek word, which is ne estio, combination of two words, not to eat. That's all it means, not to eat. So fasting is compulsory. But Jesus said, and I'm going to go over into the book of Isaiah 58 in a while. He secondly said, be not like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. In other words, he's saying to us, genuine fasting is not self-affliction, or punishment. Turn quickly to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 58. We want to read a couple of passages found in the book of Isaiah to help us to understand our motivation, our purposes in fasting. Everybody found it? Say amen. Glory to God. Now we pick up the narrative from verse 1 because it's important for you to get the background. It says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. That's the church. Tell my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight 
to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight the in approaching God. And here's the question they ask. Verse 3 says, Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. Watch now, be attentive. And exploit all your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate. And to strike with a fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day. To make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush? And to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast? And an acceptable day of the Lord? Think of this. The people of God must understand. We ought not to be like the hypocrites, to be two-faced, fasting to be seen. Genuine fasting, we must understand, is not self-affliction or punishment. Those of us come from uh, what we call traditional religions. We know that many times you look back into our religious ways of doing things, and we found out that many of us fasted to afflict our bodies. Well, I want you to understand to fast is not to punish your physical body. It is not to starve yourself. Why do we abstain from food? We abstain from food so that the hunger we have for the natural, the material, the physical, that that hunger will now become channeled in the direction of the spiritual. Fasting must always involve consecration. Fasting must always involve a time when you separate yourself as to the Lord. Fasting without consecration is not a fast at all. It's probably a F-A-R-C-E, but it's not a F-A-S-T. We fast so as to really seek the face of God, to understand the mind, the will, and the purposes of God. So I want you to know that we ought not to be like the, 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 the hypocrites, Jesus said, because they are of a sad countenance. They wanted to fast to afflict themselves. Isaiah said, is this a fast? Is it a fast? As a matter of fact, Isaiah, he said, you fast for pleasure. He said, you fast so that you can debate what is the day of fast? What is the right kind of fast? Who should fast? How should we fast? How long shall we fast? That's not the purpose of fasting. Fasting is between you and God. Are you listening to me? So even as we come into these couple of days of fasting, it must be very clear that as you go into this fast, you're consecrating yourself as unto God, and there has to be some divine purposes that will accompany your fasting. So Jesus is saying to us, be not like the hypocrites of a sad countenance. I want to quickly tell you, there are three particular types of fast that you must be aware of. First of all, in the book of Esther, the book of Esther tells us that the Jews, they were being persecuted. And Mordecai encouraged Esther as the queen who had come into the kingdom for such a time as this to understand her purpose and her place in fasting. That's why I'm telling you that as a church, we must understand our purpose and place in fasting. Yes, it is personal. Yes, it is practical. Yes, it is between you and God. But there are times you ought to pray and fast for the nation. You've got to be burdened enough by circumstances that surround us, even globally. You've got to be burdened enough about what's happening in the area of crime and in violence and in all the killings and murders that we are seeing all around us. There has to be a burden upon God's people because in the final analysis, it is only the church that can bring righteous reign and rulership in any nation. It's only the church has the divine authority to bring to pass kingdom purposes in the earth. 
We can talk and, and, uh, about governments. We can speak about institutions as long as we like. But unless the church understands her purpose in the earth, as we influence all sectors of society, we will continue to fail. Now, the first fast that I'm going to mention is called an absolute fast. It's called an absolute fast. Why is it called an absolute fast? Because it's the only kind of fast where you expect it to stay away from both food and water. Maximum, three days. How do you do it? Led by the Holy Spirit. This is not you trying to be supernatural. This is not you trying to be over spiritual. This is not you trying to do something that is not in the will and purpose of God for your life. This is a burden. This is a grace. This is a, an anointing that's supposed to follow this burden that God will place upon your heart. Now, verse 14 says, For if we remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews. Watch this now. Gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to see the king. Glory to God. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther commanded him. I want you to know this fast is called an absolute fast. Why is it called an absolute fast? Because, as I said, they had no food and no drink for three days, day nor night. That's because they had a burden. Because they had a burden. A burden that came from the Lord. A burden that only through prayer and fasting they can carry that burden. In the book of Jonah, a similar thing happened. Here is a man by the name of Jonah called to preach to Nineveh. And as he preached to Nineveh, the people recognized again it was a life or death kind of situation. So as we pick up the narrative in the book of Jonah chapter 3, and he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his noblest saying, let neither man nor beast, even the animals were fasting, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil ways and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? You hear the word perish again. If a nation, if a city, if a person is in the throes of death and God should burden your heart sufficiently, sometimes before you're even through praying and fasting, God will lift that burden. I remember my mom was sick, and the doctor said she has cancer in the throat. Somehow I knew it wasn't so. So I decided to go on a three days at what you call this absolute fast. And before I was true, I knew that it wasn't true. And when the doctors did give the final results, we know for a fact that she never had any cancer in her throat. But what did I do? I had that burden enough that I decided that I will not eat no a drink, Anything until God answered my prayer. That's a desperate situation to be in. That's a place where you're totally burdened. That's a place where you separate yourself as unto the Lord and seek him with desperation, with a passion to see the desires come to pass. Remember, 
Accomplishment is always preceded by desire. Every one of us must, fa must fast. Look at the second fast in the book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. And that's called a total fast. Again, this is the kind of fast that you must be led by the Holy Spirit. This is the kind of fast that God will normally call you to. This is the kind of fast where you pray and fast for 40 days. Now, not many of us will be able to do this. Sometimes God will call you for a, a total fast, but maybe for a longer, for a shorter period, sorry. And that's where you separate yourself and make sure it is of God. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Hallelujah. So you have to be careful because on these long fasts, you get very hungry. Now, those of you that have never fasted, you must remember when you begin to fast initially, you will normally get things like headaches. You will get hungry. You must be hungry. But you don't push yourself beyond. You've got to know what you're doing. So that brings me to the third kind of fast. We normally call it a partial fast. Why we call it a partial fast? Because you fast partially. You fast for a part of a day. You can fast between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Or 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. You can fast between 9 in the morning till 3 in the evening. You can fast by skipping a meal. You won't die. Hallelujah. You can fast by going on juice. You can fast by just staying away from meats. But that's what we call a partial fast. And as a matter of fact, what we will be doing primarily during the next three weeks is a partial fast. In the book of Daniel, chapter 9, I pick up two passages. It says in chapter 9, verse 3, Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, with sackcloth and ashes. In Daniel chapter 10, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel. And the Bible says in verse 2, in those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. That's 21 days. So normally, you think of a partial fast, and one type of, of partial fast is called a Daniel fast. But he says he was fasting for 21 days. So sometimes when you look at the nation, when you look at your own situation in a marriage, when you look at the situation in the uh, job where you are, in your community, when you look at crime, you can go on a 21 days, uh, what we call a Daniel fast, where you're under some bondage. You know, there are oppressions and there are subjugations. You can go on a Daniel fast to break this thing and you stay there for 21 days. Look at what happened. In verse 3 it says, I ate no pleasant food. That's a partial fast. That's a Daniel fast. No meat. That's a partial fast. That's a Daniel fast. A wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. This is really a sanctifying of yourself. So never forget, every fast that you do must be accomplished or accompanied by consecration. Never forget that. So we have these three kinds of fasts. You can do an absolute fast led by the Holy Spirit, a total fast led by the Holy Spirit, or a partial fast. If you want your partial fast to be three days, or, or, or even all the days of the uh, three weeks we'll be praying and fasting, you can use hours, or you can skip a meal, or you can do a juice fast, or you can abstain from meat, but you've got to fast every believer must fast. Every believer must fast. The reason why we are not experiencing the kinds of breakthroughs that we need in the church that will bring the kind of respect from the nation and the communities that we serve is because we are not doing what God wants us to do. We have church and we have religion, but we do not have the power to bring forth the manifestation of God's glory. We do not have the power 
to release the revelations of God. Listen to me carefully. One of the facts of the life we are now living, the season in which we are living, it calls for a prophetic people. I want to say it again. It calls for a prophetic people in the times that we are living in. A Daniel people, an Esther people, a Joseph's company, a people that will know their God, a people that will do exploits, a people that will stay the hand of evil, a people that will be like a Joel company who will pray and fast and bring revival to the church, bring revival to God's people to see the gifts of the Holy Ghost in demonstration. Why has church become so staid? I didn't say stale, but I say staid, meaning stagnant. It's simply because we have settled in our comfort zones. We have allowed COVID to become Lord and Master. Do this, and we do it. Do that, and we do it. But we don't hear from God. We get excited for a moment, momentary excitement. But where is the revival in our spirits? Read the book of Joel, and it comes to prayer and fasting. Number three, Jesus said, anoint your head and wash your face. Genuine fasting is not for show. Genuine fasting is not for show. Why do we fast? There are several reasons. Reasons. The catalog is endless. Let's give a couple of reasons for fasting. Since it's not for sure. Why should I fast? Well, turn your Bibles to the book of Ezra. Ezra chapter 8. Ezra, he was, as it were, a scribe. And he came from Persia, coming back to the nation to bring revelation of what true worship should be like. I want you to know we have to bring revelation of what true worship is like. But there will be always enemies who will withstand what you do. So in the book of Ezra chapter 8 and verse 21, you know, then I proclaim a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might humble ourselves. Why do we fast? To humble ourselves. That's consecration. Are you seeing that? Never go to fast without humbling yourself. Always have repentance. Always have brokenness. Every one of us must fast. We need to get rid of our pride. Humble ourselves before our God. Number two, to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. Number two, why do we fast? We want direction. What to do? What not to do? Every cell leader must fast. Every worship leader must fast. Who are the people to worship? What must we do in our worship department? What must we do in, as Sunday school teachers? What must we do in our cell groups? This beginning of this new year, we want God's anointing. We want God's direction. But he also prayed for God's protection. Where there were demonic forces that would come against you to bring you under oppressions. That's a Daniel fast for you. That would break that. Attacks upon your marriages. You need to pray and fast. And I found out over the years, I've been doing a lot of counseling with all kinds of people, uh, with marriages and so on. But I found out over the many years, counseling is important. But you see, prayer and fasting, with genuine desire to get the mind and the will of God, that will do wonders for any marriage. Will do wonders for your business. Will do wonders for your family. Will do wonders for this church when we pray and fast. There is a missing ingredient in this house. We can pray and loud as much as we want. We're going around our Jerichos, but we have not yet entered into our inheritance. We have not yet possessed our possessions. So we continue to sing and shout. But where have we gone? Where is the evidence of our inheritance? Check it out for yourself. Still sleeping in church after 20 years. Anoint your head and wash your face. This is not show. Still, man, watch TV if you want show. They don't come to watch me. Listen carefully. I speak by the Holy Ghost. 
You need to get God's direction for your life this year on your job. You need to consecrate your time of prayer and fast. Don't live there in the same old, the same old. God speaks. That's why we pray and fast. It means you go deeper. You need protection, not only direction. Let's look at some other scriptures. In the book of Acts, chapter number 13, we pick up two verses. Acts chapter 13. Here the Bible says, in the church, there were certain men of God. And they were ministering to the Lord. They were consecrating their lives. Are you still listening to me? I said, are you still listening to me? The Bible says, these men, now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. These were the ascension gifts. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene. Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, as they prayed and fasted, as they worshipped and fasted, as they sang and fasted, as they consecrated their lives with fasting, as they set themselves aside to seek God, the Bible tells us what happened. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaks when we pray and fast. The Holy Spirit shows up in a stronger way when we pray and fast. He said, now separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. See what happens in consecration? We have a greater manifestation. We have the revelation that comes from God. When there is consecration, there will come God's revelation. There will come God's manifestation. I know we can lay hands upon people, but when we pray and fast, we're going to have the manifestation of God's spirit in the house. We're going to have prophetic gifts. We're going to have word of knowledge. What do you think was happening here? Word of knowledge, word of wisdom. God giving them direction through his Holy Spirit. Where are the manifestations? Where are the prophetic words? Where are the prophetic songs? Where are the revelations that come from the Holy Ghost while we're in the house of God? Same old. We're coming to the place where you can see them and know what's happening in service one. Oh, service two is going on. Oh, they're singing now. Oh, yes, now. It's announcement. Oh, yes, now. They're, they're probably giving the offering now. Oh, yes, pastor is preaching and the others are sleeping. Oh, yes, we know exactly what's happening. We don't have to come and do what we are doing. We know our mouths are kind of undercover. But you shouldn't be muzzled. And you shouldn't be looking puzzled. Some of you. Some muzzled. And the others puzzled. What is he saying? He just woke up. He didn't know what's going on. So, stay awake. <laughs> hey! Genuine fasting is not for show. Look at verse 3. He says, Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Are you seeing that? That anointing that releases the saints for ordination, not only consecration, not only direction and protection. Hallelujah. But here it is for ordination. When God begins to work through the power of prayer and fasting, God's going to uh, uh, ordain people in the house. There's going to be separation to ministry. Suddenly, the power of God will rest upon you. Prophetic revelations come. Say, now this brother, we call you forth in the name of Jesus. God's call is upon your life. And we, we're going to pray upon you, anoint you, set you apart. You're going, we're sending you to the furthest parts of this nation. Glory to God. God begin to work in the church. People begin to be released into several ministry. Come forth. Now you sit in the church. God says he calls you to the ministry of worship. God calls another one to the Sunday school. God begins to work in revelation as we begin to have a sense of consecration. That's what we're talking about. Church, being church. Not a bunch of people listening to one person. We have people coming into the house of God. Working the works of God. Signs and wonders. 
the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, word by reason of discerning of spirits. Number four, but your father who sees in secret, your fathers who sees in secret, genuine fasting is unto the Lord. Genuine fasting is unto the Lord. Never forget that. It is not to be seen by men. It is not to be showing off that you're fasting. Fasting is like prayer. <laughs> when you pray in secret, your heavenly Father will reward you openly. I want to close by telling you, finally, it says, but you, when you pray or fast in secret, your heavenly Father, look at it now, will reward you openly. I'm sure you were tremendously blessed by that word. I'm sure God spoke to you through that word. So please share the word with someone else. And we invite you to come to our church and fellowship with us right here at Church on the Way, Tunapuna Open Bible. We are located at 7 to 9, Tunapuna Road, Tunapuna. Our doors are open on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. for our first service and then 10.30 a.m. for our second service. And you can also join us here at Friday night for our hour of power at 7 p.m. And don't come by yourself. Bring someone with you. Bring your friends. Bring your family and let's fellowship together. If you are concerned about our COVID restrictions, you can check our Facebook page to see our guidelines so that you can come and fellowship in safety. You can also reach out to us via our Facebook page or our Instagram page at Tunapuna Open Bible. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May you always be at peace. God bless you. Yeah.